Hi there, physical geographers. Um, so here we are with weathering and mass wasting. We talked about soils, landforms, internal processes. So now we're kind of getting into how some of the internal processes function. So the natural progression seems to fit pretty well in this class. So we have the inundation, impact of weathering and mass wasting on the landscape. We're just going to run through our outline of what we're going to do high level in this chapter. Weathering and rock openings, types of rock openings, jointing. Essentially, how different types of land masses um, butt to each other. Weathering agents, mechanical, chemical, biological, differential, climate, and weathering. Mass wasting factors influencing it, and the types of mass wasting fall, slide, flow, creep. Let's get into some massive movements here. Okay, so denudation, we see some of the massive movements weathering, breaking down rock, mass wasting, erosion. Had a Episode of this, driving up in the mountains last year, having some rock kind of fall down on the road. It punctured a couple of my rims in my car. Not only blew the tires, but I had to get new rims, and they had to be brought up from floor. It wasn't cheap, and it was a pretty typical car. So anyway, uh, we have that happen in Colorado quite a bit. We also see this with some of the weather with avalanches and so forth. Weathering is the first step of external processes. is really have mechanical disintegration and chemical decomposition. We have types of rock openings, microscopic, very small, spaces between crystals, joints, major cracks is points of stress, which we see below right here. And we have faults, which are usually kind of at an angle, uh, shifting in bedrock or major um, undercarriage, to use an automobile analogy, um, basically the foundations moving. Lava vesicles, holes from gas bubbles and cold lava and solution cavities. Here we see examples of master joints. The lithospheric bedrock is almost all of its jointed. So we see vertical joints, bedding joints, widely spaced joints, essentially where the rock folds together. So we talked about atmospheric and lithospheric. Atmosphere is kind of more of what we breathe, the water we ingest also. Uh, most agents, as far as weathering agents and decomposition and degradation, or atmospheric in origin. We have importance in temperature changes, which influences uh, the composition. Biotic agents, burrowing of animals, growth of plant foods, for instance, earthworms living in the earth, we covered in soils. We also see burrowing of animals. And we really have three principal categories whether in mechanical, chemical, and biotic. Now we're running through weathering agents mechanical weathering, physical disintegration of rock. You can see that kind of breaking apart. Several so causes freeze thaw action water, essentially going through cracks and expanding, cracking um, through wedging, frost wedging. As salt wedging, salt crystallizes out of solution as water evaporates. Dry climates, upward in rock openings and evaporates, leaves behind tiny crystals over time. We can see temperature changes in this infiltration, causing some weathering. Also exfoliation curve layers peel off of bedrock. So we see different kinds of movement as far as exfoliation dome. Some examples we have here below. You have other mechanical weathering processes, chemical actions, um, biotic contributions of chemical weathering. We see examples of both of those. Biological weathering. Living organisms like growing on rocks or within rocks like lichens. Um, differential weathering. Rocks or parts of some rock erode at different times. So a different hardness, different composition, which can cause them to change the weather over time, which when they're essentially in the same composition, that can cause some movement. And climate and weathering also, which we covered in 112. Climate weathering can be enhanced or more heavily influenced or exacerbated through combination of high temperatures and precipitation, which we see some influences in the chart in the top right. We can also see surface um, degradation through climate weathering. And now we're going to move into mass wasting. So process where weather materials move down a short distance down slope, direct influence of gravity. So angle repost, st steepest angle we have. Um, water diminishes friction, so essentially it can cause 
water if we have some fluids, for instance, mudslides quickly moving down the side of a mountain. Clay mixes with water being very slick, and then we also have permafrost ground melts in the summer, which can contribute to mass wasting. So here we see a bunch of samples. Mudslides, earth flow, soil flexion, landslide, slumping, kind of falling down, rock fall just off the edge, and creep. Rock fall, rock falling down slope, landslide, we literally have slide um, movement of land with one of the um, types of um, slippery um, substances or compositions we talked about. Um, rock avalanches, usually on some ice or some moisture. It's slump collapsing slide. We also have flow, earth flow, mud flow, debris flow, creep, gradual downhill movement, of soil and regolith, entire slope, and soil flexion, soil flowage process, and tundra landscape above the tree line. So we see this in Arctic regions typically or tundra, for example. Um, near surface layer ground melts, water cannot percolate, so it can't go down into the earth. Um, as far as the uh, lithosphere, and soil particles become saturated, material sags down slope also. So we see this in Rocky Mountain National Park. I have to spend a lot of time there, um, especially in the summers, kind of hiking around and doing a little bit of fly fishing. So I see quite a bit of um, episodes of this. You can see quite a bit of movement of soil and glaciers, so forth. Okay, that concludes our chapter.